Hello everybody and welcome to my first video for our introduction to sociology. I thought I really needed to get some fresh air and also change your perspective. I find it really refreshing to watch videos of people I follow on YouTube when they're outside, so I'll try that. So, in our ninth session, we will be talking about uh, Judith Butler and uh, Gender Trouble, a book of hers where she uh, dramatically changed the way we perceive of gender in our society, not only in sociology, not only in scientific and the academic debate, but also in our societal discourse. I think most of you will have learned in school that, at least if you're from, from the United States or from Germany or other Western European countries, um, that we differentiate between the biological sex and uh, the so social or societally um, determined gender. And you will also have discussed the concept that uh, these are not binary categories and that there's actually a continuum, a continuum between male and female, um, that there is um, not only uh, a continuum between male and female gender, but also a continuum between male and female sex. Um, now, this is greatly due to um, the work of Judith Butler, who really uh, had a very, very strong impact on this uh, entire discussion. So let's uh, think about her work for a couple of minutes. So um, first, we need to understand that um, her idea and concept occurs to the ideas of symbolic interactionism, as we've learned with uh, Mead and Goffman, uh, who we are and what is expected of us are closely connected. And that we find the meaning of who we are in uh, how we stage this in our interaction with other people. So uh, this uh, can, for example, be that I perf perform a specific representation of myself as a professor to you in my interaction with you. And in doing so, I fulfill specific expectations you might have of what a professor is supposed to do. Or I will at least relate to these expectations, because there are specific given norms in terms of what this behavior should actually be and conform with. Uh, these norms and expectations that we deal with, where do they come from? If everybody just complies with norms and expectations, who came up with them? It's what one does as a professor. Okay, one does as a professor, as professors do, because that's what professors do. Well, then, if the norm is in the compliance with the norm, where does it come from? This has a positive and a negative side, has an empowering and, and, and not empowering side. The one side is that you can actually change societal norms by changing behavior. On the other hand, you can't just merely change behavior because there are societal norms that are not merely dependent on the individual. So, okay, that being said, let's get back to um, the discussion of performativity in this context. We talked about embodiment as an important additional factor of how we become who we are in how we perform who we are. You might have noticed that I have specific manners of behavior and of holding my body, showing myself, presenting myself, that are actually embodied in my behavior. This is 
partly something that has inseparably become me also on a physical level. So my body, my muscle system, my face, the wrinkles in my face are actually an embodiment, an engraved impersonation of who I am physically in my bodily being. Now let's reflect what we've learned in terms of dramatology, of symbolic interactionism, and in terms of performance studies, performativity, to our gender identities. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that who we are in terms of our gender is also something that we do, something where we represent and present who we are to others, where we put on specific masks that have a specific relation to what is being expected of us, and where we behave in a way that actually conforms and complies with these expectations, or at least relates in a specific way to them. If we think about performance studies and dramatology from a gender perspective, then it is pretty easy to understand that who we are as men, women, also is something where we present a specific self to others in terms of who we are as gender personalities, as a man, as a woman. It's also clear that this presentation of self and how we manage it is something that we do with our bodies and that we represent bodily. So I don't think it's uh, really surprising if you think about it that you can conceive of gender as something that is over time embodied by our behavior. That we do our gender rather than being it. That at the end of the day we become a man or a woman or something in between by performing this manlyhood or this femininity. This is very important because this also means that who we are in terms of our gender, is actually something that we can influence. Think about the way we dress. Think about the way we move. Think about our posture, about gestures. Think about uh, our sexuality. Whom we sleep with, whether we have sex or not, is definitely a part of performing who we are as men or women, or whatever is between we choose to be. And it also uh, is something that we can choose to do. Now this is an important point. Uh, the way I dress, for example, is a masculine way of dressing. Mm. Zoom out. So if you think about this, uh, if you think about it, the way I dress is specifically masculine. The kind of hat I'm wearing, the kind of shirt I'm wearing, even the shirt I'm wearing, it's interestingly, um, is buttoned in a specific way as to determine it as a male shirt. If the buttons go this way, it's a male shirt. If the buttons are the other way around, right to left, so to say, it's a female shirt. And that sometimes is the only difference between two shirts that make them distinguish them as male or female. The way we dress also has an influence on the way we move. And the way we move definitely is part of how we do, how we perform our gender. Now, interestingly, Butler says that as with norms in general, our gender identity is something that we can subversively change. We can counteract towards the expected way of a man 
to behave, of a man to move, to speak, or to dress. So I thought today I might do just that as a social experiment. So see you in a moment dressed as a woman. Okay, here I am back in my apartment and now I'm getting dressed as a woman and my girlfriend's my girlfriend will be helping me with this. Uh, I will be wearing her clothes and she's standing behind the camera and will be giving me the clothes that I need for that. So I will cut away part of the undressing. Um, but this is pretty typical. If you just look at it and describe it as a way of male dressing, it's pretty easy to detect. Now, this part will not be on camera. Uh, I'm taking off my pants and putting on, what's that called? Tights. What? Tights? Oh, okay, so I'm wearing tights. This way around? This way around, correct? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Socken I should have taken off my socks, she tells me. Yeah, then it's okay. clear from us. <coughs> ah, too late. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning this. Uh, I'll keep on my socks, uh, and then you'll see me in tights in a second. So, so uh, I'm actually going to go out on the street with this because I want to see what that does to me and how that, what that feels like to dress as a woman and to be seen as a woman. That's actually quite pleasant. See myself in the camera. Is that correct with the... Yeah, Next, what else do I need to wear? Okay, now let's take a look at what this looks like. The first thing that's interesting to me is that actually my first reaction was, oh, I'm fat. Because when I don't, when I relax my b belly, then it kind of sticks out with, with this. And that's the f first time in a long time I thought that. So I'm now actually pulling in my stomach, which is weird. Just because I'm wearing a dress, that is funny. Okay, I'm instructed to wear this. Just like so? No. Okay, so, or do I knot it up? Okay, I like the colors. Or like, like so, like so. Like so? Yeah. Okay, I can I immediately understand that the way I stand, you don't see that right now. I'm standing kind of shoulder breadth. That is, that's doesn't match up with the clothes I'm wearing. It kind of feels funny to stand the way I stand, wearing the things I wear, which I didn't expect. Let's see what else we have because I'll try other clothes too. Das passt ja sogar. Ja, gut. Na gut, dann. Muss das auch reinstecken? Ja, eigentlich würde ich das glaube ich machen. Aber so, dass der Bund dann auch nicht so verkrumpelt ist wie eben. Okay. Alright. Nimmst du das schon auf? Ja. Yeah. Ah. And this is tricky. Let's make him helfen. Ah. Au. Das ist zu eng. Ich mal die Schultern hinten zu sagen. Ja, aber. Okay, this is, this is kind of really tight and it's also. I have, don't have enough room to. My arms don't fit in. Uh, so I think I can't, I can't really wear this. Um, but to me, it seems to look. Wie findest du es? It seems to look kind of nice. The colors oh, go ganz well. Gut. But I think I'll have to. <laughs> Komm her. Komm nicht raus. Yeah, you know. Even my hand is too big for that. 
Aber es ist ja nicht Sinn der Sache, einfach nicht passendes anzuziehen. Kannst du immer auf der anderen Seite aufziehen. Zieh mal das andere an, das ist okay. glaube ich größer. Ah. Puh. Okay, this is, this is, partially I see this, I, I remember this, I grew up with two sisters, and I remember this groaning when dressing. That seems to be part of female dressing, that you put on stuff that is so tight, that you, that you squeeze through stuff, and so I remember that from my childhood. So, yeah, see the buttons are on the other side, because it's a female piece of clothing. And but I don't really like the color combination that much. I, I preferred the first color. That's similar. That's similar. I think I'm going with, what do you say, which, which outfit will, will I wear outside? I think this is just too cold for, for, for now. So maybe the gray one? Okay, I'll, I'll go back scarf. to the gray one. Okay, my girlfriend just said that she never had this groaning and grunting and stretching that I experienced with my sister when when I grew up that was part of dressing so I shouldn't generalize and I, I think I have to agree with that so uh, we do both agree on these colors being being a nice combination though um, so okay I need something to cover my head and this is a hat that my uh, girlfriend always wants to see on me I think it's totally ridiculous it's actually the first time I laughed when when dressing now because I think it looks totally stupid. Uh, but uh, anyway, I have to wear something. And an interesting question came up uh, is, am I pretending to be a woman and dressing up as a woman and specifically choosing clothes that are female? Or am I just taking the clothes my girlfriend's wear, uh, girlfriend wears um, and just dressing as she would which isn't necessarily 100% stereotypical. So uh, I don't want this to be a farce or something, I just want to try it out. So it's an interesting question because there is a difference between the two. Now also, I still need to get my makeup done. Now one big problem that we've run into is uh, shoes because uh, my, sh my feet are bigger than my girlfriend. So these is what she came up with. This, the problem, only problem with these is they're cold, probably right now it'll be freezing. Hopefully I'm not getting sick, but I can open them at the end and uh, maybe they'll fit and I can show you what that looks like in a moment. Oh, perfect, it works. I'll just have to tilt the camera to show you. Ah. So, those are the shoes I was wearing before and those are the shoes I'm wearing now. I'll be wearing them on the street. They have kind of high heels. And uh, let's see how I manage with that. Also, there's this thing about shoes with, with uh, women. I, I don't know. This is, this is the most, besides from the, from the awkward hat that I'm not comfortable with, this is the most unusual for me. The dress actually feels quite, quite fine. But... Uh, the shoes are really something to get used to. And I see that my, when I look at I was looking at myself in the mirror, I saw my stance, the usual, obviously male, I understand now, stance that I have looks totally ridiculous and with these shoes. So I'd have to change my stance like to something like, something like this to make it look more natural or normal, uh, which is unusual for me. And, and it's very interesting because it's actually the clothes telling me how to hold my body. If I were wearing this kind of shoes uh, for a couple of years, I'm sure my body posture would change. It's interesting. Next up is makeup. A big thank you to my girlfriend who did a tremendous job of doing my makeup so patiently. It's weird to pay so much attention for so long time to my face. Never did that. Yeah, well, actually, it's my girlfriend, Marta, who's doing all the attention paying to my face here. Well, by the way, this is the haircut of this Corona haircut.
Surprise gesture is something I'm not used to, and I'm guessing that women who do a lot of makeup are totally standard used to doing. I can't, I can't actually do it. I cut your wood so easy for you. You can't help but say, hot dog. Woodcutting Sam, some call me Woodcutting Jim. The last girl I cut wood for, she wants me back again. I'm a crosscut saw, babe. Baby, drag me across the log. I see, just pluck my eyebrows. It's painful. Hey, hot dog. This kind of stuff in my on my skin and my face. It was unpleasant. It was like at the dentist. So this is the result. And it's what it looks like. And, uh, I must say it's it's uh, it's weird, but it, I think it's it goes well. You did a good job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Took a half an hour or so. Um, took a half an hour, uh, but. Uh, Ah, this is better lighting, okay. So, it's something definitely to get used to. Look at yourself as a different person. Uh, I kind of, I'm not so sure whether I recognize myself. I do look a little, a lot like my sister. That's, that's nice. Okay. Got man. Okay, I think I'm ready to go, right? Okay, this is what it looks like. Dressing as a woman. Um, so this is a social experiment. I'm feeling kind of un uncomfortable in my skin right now because people think that I really look weird. But this might also be because, uh, because uh, what you're not maybe so aware of, I'm, I'm wearing a camera with me, and that in general is, is kind of kind of a weird thing to do. Okay, I'll cross the street right now, go back, and I think my well, the, my neighbors in my house actually saw me like this, so they don't know what I do professionally, so they might get the wrong impression here. Uh, also, probably people think that uh, that people go, people are going crazy now in quarantine, looking for things to do. Um, who would think that this is actually a sociology prof recording a lesson for his students? 
still haven't got the way of walking quite right. So actually, um, I must say, it's. Um, I feel okay. I feel a bit uncomfortable walking from time to time. I stumble, um, but um, I could imagine. I could imagine to dress like this. Seems seems kind of okay to me. This was an interesting social experiment for you. And uh, let's see whether some of you dress up tomorrow for class. See you in class. So I hope that was interesting for you. Uh, it was an interesting experience for me myself. Uh, and uh, I hope you'll do your readings. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. And I mean actually seeing you in class. That is, if you want to, try it out yourself. Uh, Cross-dress tomorrow and bring that to class. Share it with the others. Share your experience. Looking forward to our discussion. Bye-bye.